kritik kesihatan pun juga tekanan COVID-19 was discovered in Wuhan, China And now affecting not only Malaysia but the whole world. As the number of cases are rising, many have lost their lives due to the virus. We are currently in the process of distributing the vaccine to everyone in order to lessen the number of cases. COVID-19 pandemic, every layer of society has been affected differently. Healthcare concerns, both physical and mental, have been increasing among society worldwide and are proving to be an obstacle to the community's well-being. In uncertain times, healthcare innovations have undoubtedly played a vital role in aiding the continuity of life. Assalamualaikum and greetings, I be to everyone. We are the representatives from Tukukusha College and this is our video presentation with the topic healthcare innovations and mental health anxiety management during the pandemic. One of the key highlights in this presentation is how to recognize and manage mental health anxiety. Before getting into the whole topic, let me give you a view about what is actually meant by mental health anxiety. Anxiety is a feeling of unease, such as worry or fear, that can be either mild or severe. We all feel anxious at certain times, but anxiety could lead to mental health disorders if it doesn't go away and gets worse over time. Anxiety disorders can affect us mentally and make it difficult to get through the day. It is also one of the most prevalent mental health disorders. However, there are several effective treatments to limit or prevent the further effects of anxiety. During this pandemic, I believe everyone has their own uncertainties to cope with but most of the time, it is quite tough for the majority of our society. Let's take a look at the statistics on how much the COVID-19 affected our mental health. According to the Malaysian Psychiatric Association, did you know that by the year 2020, mental illness is expected to be the second biggest problem affecting Malaysians after heart disease? Based on this chart, it is shown that Malaysia ranked 17th in the world with a percentage of 45% of the society that strongly agrees that COVID-19 has left them struggling with mental health issues. We all feel anxious sometimes, but what is the difference between normal anxiety and anxiety disorder? Firstly, normal anxiety usually occurs in response to a stressor, for example, an upcoming exam, interview or presentation. People with anxiety disorders feel anxious all the time. Secondly, the intensity and length of anxiety is ongoing compared to normal anxiety, which is fleeting. And lastly, anxiety disorders directly affects and impairs your daily life. Three commonly known types of anxiety disorders are generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, panic disorders, and phobias. People with GAD worry excessively about ordinary things, and they have them almost every day. People with panic disorders experience panic attacks, which can come quickly and can last for a few or maybe more minutes. People with phobias experience an intense fear of something that poses a little or no threat to them at all, for example, a fear of spiders or a fear of closed spaces. Some mental symptoms of anxiety include racing thoughts, uncontrollable overthinking, difficulties concentrating, feelings of dread, panic, or impending doom, feeling irritable, heightened alertness, problems with sleep, and changes in appetite. To assess the public's thoughts and opinions on their mental health condition, we have conducted a survey that accumulates 384 anonymous responses from people of all ages. Moving forward to this question, we managed to identify that 39.8% of people have someone close to them who have been medically diagnosed with mental health anxiety issues while the other 60.2% don't. From this chart, it is shown that a large majority of people experience overthinking that sums up to 81.8%, while the least experienced symptom is hyperventilation with only 41.7%. These were some responses that we obtained from the public regarding their struggles during this pandemic. 
and our combined efforts to stay safe and save lives. Our usual ways of seeing family, friends, or just familiar faces have been put on pause. Mental health issues is higher in people who are unemployed, full-time students, and single parents in each wave of the survey has tracked the mental health of the nation since March 2020. Forging ahead, we know that every problem has its own solution, just like how every lock is made with a key. Healthcare innovation is to develop new or improved health policies, systems, products, and technologies that deliver methods to improve people's health with a special focus on the needs of vulnerable populations. Innovations or technologies are paving the way for a new era for healthcare that is changing the way we make medical decisions and how we receive treatment. One thing that we have to keep in mind is that we spend a lot of money globally on healthcare. We spend getting on for around $7.5 trillion a year, including delivering healthcare services around the world and comprising $2 trillion spent on inputs of healthcare, the drugs, the medical devices, the IT, and so on. With these medical innovations, past and future comes an often overlooked benefit. Medications, therapies, and medical technologies not only save lives but also save our money. We often heard that medical innovation is a cost driver and not a cost saver. But little do you know that eradicating a disease, people will no longer spend their money on treatment. The cost that we have been incurred in addressing patients' ongoing medical issues can be avoided entirely. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, for every dollar spent on innovative medicines, total healthcare spending is reduced by. $7.20. In the 2001 Foundation for Research on Equal Opportunity, or the Index of Healthcare Innovation, analyzed by Greg Griffin and Avik Roy, six countries earn an excellent overall rating, which are Switzerland, the Netherlands, Germany, Ireland, and the United States. One of the healthcare innovations that are made during this pandemic are drones for medical supplies deliveries. North Carolina's Novan Health partnered with Zipline, a company that specializes in delivering medical supplies to remote areas, to create a drone to deliver COVID supplies. They delivered them via parachute for a truly no-contact experience. Another healthcare innovation that has been made that can help you during this pandemic is an application that allows you to connect and communicate with therapists online. Talkspace is an incredible app that can help you, especially if you're struggling with mental health during this pandemic. You can also choose to instead text or call your therapist if you feel uncomfortable doing it face-to-face -face through a screen. Moving on to the next part of the presentation, we'll be touching on ways to handle this issue. The most important advice is to exercise self-care. And what self-care here means is taking the time to carry out activities that will improve your physical and mental health. Simple acts like sleeping well, exercising regularly, and eating correctly may seem small, but these acts give a significant positive impact on our mental health. Moreover, we also need to connect with our feelings and acknowledge our emotional responses to situations. Through this, we can understand ourselves better and manage to find ways that would help cope with these troubling times. Communicating with our body and handling its emotional responses helps us avoid conflict, stress, and overall allows us to maintain healthy emotionally. Now, let's take a look about what the government has done to help those in need. Talian Kase is a 24-hour hotline initiated by the Minister of the Women, Family and Community Development Ministry, Datuk Seri Rina Harun. Due to restrictions of the MCO, many have resorted to this option and found solace after letting loose to one of the 528 counsellors there. Those undergoing emotional distress find talking to someone anonymously over the phone as a miracle way to seek emotional support. And that is what Talian Kase has been providing all this time. Ladies and gentlemen, to summarize our presentation, we were able to explain what mental health anxiety and healthcare innovation is, the differences between anxiety itself and anxiety disorders, the contribution of healthcare innovations during the pandemic, and what we can do to alleviate our issues, as well as what the government has done to help those affected. This pandemic has definitely served its purpose as an eye-opener on how drastically one's life can change due to their surroundings. So a simple phone call to your family or friend battling with mental health anxiety may just ameliorate their side by then. With how far healthcare innovations have stretched as the world evolves, as a knowledgeable society, it is our job to recognize the importance of these healthcare innovations so that maybe we could help those in need. And it is all we have to say in the span of 10 minutes. Thank you all for listening to the end.